Thanks, Father. Thank you. Have fun. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Greg, for the introduction. Yes, I brought uh, together the two worlds, uh, luxury and technology. I started in 99, so it's 20 years ago, so much earlier than we met. And, um, and I'm a tech guy. So in, uh, in the fashion industry, they see me as a tech guy. Uh, when I go to fashion shows, uh, when I go to luxury summits, in fact, uh, our company that is uh, over two billion is investing almost one billion in technology over five years. So it's a technology company. Uh, but here today at the Wired, which is also kind, kind of uh, weird, I'm, I'm talking about my analog side, which is uh, the balance between the man and the machine. So this unique intersection that I'm working on in the luxury industry since 20 years. Uh, that's the, um, the topic of my talk. Quick disclaimer, even if I'm not a lawyer, I will be talking about the men and the machine, but I'm gonna talk also about men and women, not only, only, not only about men. And uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I, need, I needed to say it's just uh, an abbreviation to make uh, the language much more simple. Okay, men and the machine. Um, men is uh, about uh, emotions, uh, it's about beauty, it's about um, feelings, while the machine is about speed, information, power, future. Can these uh, two worlds coexist? How can we strike the right balance between man and the machine? Um, since 99, when I invented UX, uh, I asked myself this question. And, uh, and I've been working on this intersection between the man and machine since 20 years. So I started from the name. The name UX uh, came from uh, my choice to uh, find the balance between uh, the man and the machine. Because uh, Y and X are the chromosomes of uh, men and women, so men and women. Uh, embracing the O, the zero of the binary code, so the DNA of technology. So in, in a, a kind of humanity embracing technology, so humanity in control of technology or using technology as a tool and not vice versa. And uh, that was the first concept where I started from. And this concept translated uh, also into the look and feel of our first website um, and uh, its home page. And I remember, I mean, I remember the homepage. We're talking about 1999. I'm sure about Werner will be uh, disgusted by, <laughs> by this homepage. Uh, in fact, at that point, uh, I had to choose, again, it's a question of choice, between an Amazon-like, white, super efficient, sleek, great conversion rate, ta-ta-ta-ta-ta, or something edgier, cooler, more artsy. So you can see it freeze in London. Um, in order to convey this human aspect of luxury and fashion. Because luxury and fashion is more that part of, uh, of uh, the man and the machine. And uh, despite the fact that, that I put together around the table uh, 10 friends and experts uh, from different nationalities and different industries, and I asked, uh, what do you think? Do you prefer this one or this one? Um, I chose, and they, they all advised me to go for the Amazon-like. Um, but I chose uh, to go for this one that was weird. You may like it or not like it. Remember, 20 years ago, we we're still talking about the 56K dial-up. That's, it was 20 years ago. Um, and no offense to Amazon. I, I, I met uh, Jeff a couple of times. I know him very well. so. I respect him a lot. <laughs> um, and that was uh, one of the first example when uh, I made this choice. So the name and the, and, the, and the website. Imagine that this home page is dead in the sense that uh, we won't have one home page anymore, but uh, we have three million customers buying luxury and spending 500 euro every time that they come to our websites, Netaporte, Yooks. Uh, Mr. Porter, and so on. Um, and each one of them is having and will have his own homepage. And this is thanks only to 
big data, artificial intelligence, that is combining all the data for, from our customers, the calendar, the weather, maybe if they are in Australia, it's much, I mean, they will buy summer clothes compared to if they are in New York, maybe they will start buying the fall. Um, and this is possible only thanks to technology. So the, the, the amount of data, imagine, to put together and to, to, to give it to everybody, also their own content, maybe like uh, if you don't know how to bow your tie and you are going to a gala, you will get uh, the home page how to how to tie your bow. Um, how to bow your tie. Anyway, that one. <laughs> one, one or the other. <laughs> um, and uh, this is possible only through technology. But now I'm, I will, uh, I'm, we showed this uh, to, the, to the Royal Highnesses. Um, I think they came to our tech hub because we're investing heavily in London, uh, despite Brexit. Um, and we're, we built a huge tech hub with more than 600 engineers and data scientists in White City. Uh, and so Royal, the Royal Highnesses, they came to visit us and we showed them these, uh, let's say, new home page of the future, and they were very interested. Um, but now let me take you through a few examples of um, the choice that we made uh, in terms of the right balance between man and the machine. First one, easy one, is uh, about our packaging. So our logistics center are fully automized, uh, robots that go faster than a Ferrari from zero to 100, uh, everything is automized, except the final touch, which is the intersection with the customer. Because we know that the customer love to receive a package. Like It's a kind of childlike moment. And this package needs to be amazing. It needs to be made, handmade, in, in a way. And that's why we have people, and we chose to have people and not to, to have machines. It could have, this could, could have been done by machines. Ta -ta 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 but we chose that we wanted people to make the last packaging, the last mile of, uh, of, the, of the chain. And also like in terms of, of online, offline, uh, I remember when I started in 99, that uh, it was the beginning of the, uh, of the burst of the bubble. And at a certain point, everybody said, uh, so before they said everything will be online. Then a few months later, they said everything will go back to offline. So <laughs> I've never been a fanatic uh, in this sense, uh, and I, I'm a kind of, as I said, uh, I'm a digital guy, but also analog. I'm a hybrid model, um, and, uh, and, a hybrid, hy and I believe uh, also in the online to offline experience. So we are working, for example, with Valentin on this uh, revolutionary project in terms of a true complex omnichannel that has uh, a lot of complexity behind the scene because we are integrating the online experience of the customer with their offline. So if you go to a Valentino shop, you will get uh, a very passionate uh, salesman, uh, shop assistant that uh, knows everything about Valentino, that has been working there since 30 years, that met Mr. Valentino at the beginning of the story, and they will tell you everything about the new collection and so on. But at the same time, you will get also the um, power of the web of valentino.com, powered by Uxnet Apporté, where you will get the speed of information, the product information of all the collection, and, and, and also, last but not least, uh, you will never find the product sold out in the shop, which is uh, the basic of uh, the customer experience. Um, now moving to other examples. So this is uh, uh, an interesting example, which is the, our stylists. So we've been styling product, because we do only fashion and luxury, we've been styling products since 20 years in Milan, in London, in New York, in Tokyo, in China. So we have like a very talented stylist. And, and we have decided, we have, again, it's a choice that we've made, that uh, we want uh, to have artificial intelligence stylist in the sense of uh, uh, let's say, collecting all this data from all this taste of our stylist and giving this data to our personal shoppers. This doesn't replace, we don't want to replace our stylist. We just want to have a machine learning their taste. And so, because taste can be learned. And, 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 and then with this tool, 
we're going to give it to the personal shoppers that have, uh, they have the interface with the final customer to give them the best recommendations in terms of the outfit for that particular occasion or event. So again, it's a combination, it's a balance between many machines. Um, another, let's say, example here is also about the uh, private label. So any retailer in the world have their own private label. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased to, to, to tell this audience that in a couple of weeks, Hughes uh, will launch uh, his own uh, collection, his own private label, his own product uh, that won't be named Ux, uh, will be named something else. I cannot disclose it because otherwise the PRs will kill me. <laughs> but uh, this uh, collection will be generated by data. So it's uh, generated by data, by artificial intelligence collection, but designed by the creative team. And again, we chose uh, not to have uh, a collection designed by data, but using the data, we think that our creative team can interpret better our customer needs going forward. So, as a wrap up, so what I've tried to show is that we must make choices to strike the right balance between man and machine. And, and these choices are only going to get harder as technology accelerates. Uh, at times, this means also rejecting some of the gains uh, through technology. So it's a choice that sometimes is not efficient. Um, it would be probably easier to let machine do everything. But luxury, and I'm talking about uh, our industry, but some of the things that I've, I've been telling you, I think can apply also to all, all, over, all, all of your industries, cannot be exclusively a AI created uh, or drone delivered or 3D printed. I'm sure that there are limits to how far you'd like tech to go in your own industries. Uh, but I hope I've shown you that nurturing human talent is a choice that we all can make. Uh, it's not a choice to stop technology. I mean, as I said at the beginning, I'm a technology guy, but uh, it's a choice that to stop ourselves from allowing technology to replace what we truly value. Human will be a choice. So I'd like to make a prediction now. Uh, today, we, we, we use labels like made in Italy, uh, British made, um, design in California, um, what else, German automobiles, Swiss watches that you have seen before. I so all these labels are to convey a sense of quality to the customers. I believe that in the future there will be one label that will convey this uh, message to the customers, and this label will be made by humans. Thank you so much.